Welcome everyone to Facebook Live. I hope you had a good Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. And this is the day after, so what a wonderful opportunity to just seek the Lord together. And um, you know, um, a lot of churches have canceled services, um, you know, t uh, today or tonight or whatever, but um, we're here to um, just get the Word of God out uh, through Facebook platforms. So we just hope that this is a blessing to you and that you're able to feed your spirit after we've been so involved with the holidays, right? Just so much going on and all that food and um, the relatives and traveling and <clears throat> so forth and so on. It's been a, a wonderful holiday for, for many. And, and now it's like it's over and we're going on into the new year. So uh, what a great opportunity here that we have. So... Um, just feel free to be posting your comments and uh, your uh, concerns and give your likes and your just whatever is on your heart. And, um, you know, for sure the, uh, the uh, prayer requests, um, you know, that is on your heart. Because though we have this dreamy holiday, you know, and we're full of the glow, we still have needs, don't we? They don't. They don't um, let up during this time. So uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to worship the Lord and just sing some of these songs, some of these old Calvary classics and all, and, and maybe uh, more of a newer one uh, too. And also um, we're going to pray and just get into the Word. We're going to be in 1 John 2, 19 through 23 <clears throat> with a message entitled Fresh Anointing for the New Year. Boy, isn't that great? You know, that title it just happens to be where we're at as we're working our way through the book of First John. You know how we just take a few verses each time that we meet, and it happens to be talking about the anointing of the Spirit. Isn't that great? I just thought that was so cool and so wonderful of the Lord uh, to bring forth this passage for us for this time that we can be encouraged you know, for the new year coming up. And uh, it's just a few days, isn't it? And we're going to be putting that calendar over. My daughter gave me a new calendar for uh, for Christmas. And um, it's dogs. She knows I like dogs. And um, what a blessing to be able to turn that uh, page over, start the fresh new year in the Lord. So let's pray right now. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we have had to worship you during the Christmas holiday season. And soon we'll be closing out the year, Lord. And we just pray for your fresh anointing upon us right now by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that you would prepare our hearts for your word. We lift up our requests to you, all of our concerns, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just pray that, you know, for those uh, who can just come into the Facebook room tonight, that they would be able to uh, hear the Word of God, to understand it, to download it, Lord, by your Holy Spirit to their hearts. And Lord, your Word would be life-changing as we come off the busy holiday time and uh, want to be able to refocus, Lord, on the things of you. We thank you, Lord, for our friends and our family, and we thank you for all the great things that we've been able to do and that we're going to do the rest of this holiday season. But we pray, Lord, that you would be in it and that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. All right, good to see you guys starting to come in. Um, uh, thank you, Francis and Adina and Brandon, uh, saying Merry Christmas. And we say Merry Christmas to you. Uh, these are our Go Missionaries down in Belize, Central America, who have a uh, Calvary Chapel church down there. And God bless you guys in serving the Lord. Glad that you're watching, that your internet is good and all. And uh, ours is too here. Uh, Tom Miter, God bless you too, Pastor Tom. And just great to see you coming around and saying hello. And, and I think your wife calls you Mr. Fun. So you are a blessing in the Lord. And we thank you uh, also, Elvia, for coming in and agreeing uh, with uh, us in prayer. So let's just get right down to it. And let's, since we're going to talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let's sing some songs about the Holy Spirit. 
my favorite one's coming, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. But uh, let's try this one. Come, Holy
Amen, brothers and sisters. All the pain and the sorrow. Let it be washed away. All those hurts and all that we carry in our hearts. You know, as we talk to each other, we find out we have things in common, don't we? We all have a struggle. We all have a, a pushback, a setback. Uh, we all have some hurt, you know, that it's been um, given to us. Things that we truly carry upon our hearts. And isn't it great to just call out to the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come upon us. Touch our hearts. Absorb us into your love and your grace. And all that pain, too. And those things that we carry. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Let's sing, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Let's just make this an afterglow, brothers and sisters. And we're just going to be calling out to the Lord that the Holy Spirit would truly come upon us um, as we've gone through Christmas time now, as we're facing that new year. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come upon us and to renew our strength and our energies uh, we've been just going like crazy, you know, through the holidays. There's so much to do and all. But now it's time to settle in the things of the Lord. Amen. Let's refocus on Jesus. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit
It's wonderful to just get quiet before the Lord, you know. That's why I love opportunities like this to gather. That's why I love going to church and coming apart. You know, we all work hard and um, go, 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 don't we? With all of our to-dos and everything. And to just have this time. So, so wonderful. I just hope you're blessed and enjoying the program tonight. And we want to pray and seek the Lord. And, um, you know, I want to just uh, lift up uh, any needs. The Lord knows we have needs. But I also want to pray for some uh, special needs uh, for those who have lost loved ones. You know, we've had uh, the um, Cran family um, has lost their beloved Jeff. And Jeffrey Cran, Dr. Cran, passed away uh, just a little while ago. And they had the service for him down in the Phoenix area this past week. And I watched it online. He was one of our GO missionaries. He was an apologist. He'd go around just talking to the Lord. He's a completed Jew. Uh, I mean, speaking for the Lord. He's a completed Jew and um, had such a great ministry. Had just received his doctorate from um, Biola uh, Talbot University and so forth. And God was using him. He was an associate of... Um, uh, George Saig, Ministry to Muslims, another one of our GO missionaries, and um, just um, got COVID and, and went in the hospital, and he just, he just passed. And so we want to pray for Marlene, and they have a large family of uh, adult, young adult children. Um, so they're all different ages, and we want to pray for them. And we want to keep in mind um, others, too. Uh, still the Pete White family, as Pete, um, we drove up to Ventura a few weeks ago, Cheryl and I, for his memorial. He's the one I told you about a few uh, weeks ago that uh, he was driving home after church and uh, the Santa Ana winds were blowing hard here in SoCal and a tree um, just fell off, a big tree branch and crushed his car and, and killed him. Um, he was um, on life support for a week and a half, and then, um, you know, they, they took him off, and he died. And, and uh, what a great service it was for Brother Pete. He was one of our former GO missionaries to Macau, China, and um, also he was a former board member of GO Ministries. So, good friend of mine. I had just talked with him. Um, he invited me up in January to come guest speak at Calvary Chapel Ventura there um, to give a uh, missions emphasis uh, Bible study there on Mission Sunday uh, in late January and then got news that he had passed away. So we want to pray for his wife, Katz, and their young adult children as well. You know, they all four got up there to testify, the four children and, and um, Katz and the strength that God gave them. You know, so let's pray for these and, and for others. We can continue to pray for our, our nation and for the COVID increase now as we're having the Omicron variant. And, you know, we've had just the, the Delta and, and the one that we started with. It's been a couple years now, and we just want to just continue to pray for protection over our families. Um, want to pray for Pastor Bill Hoganson, too. He's from Calvary Chapel, Anaheim. Uh, he had a heart condition. He's in the hospital right now. And so I want to pray for him as well. So join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, that we can just speak out the needs. I want to pray for the Cran family. Lord, I want to pray for the White family. Lord, I pray that you would be with these who have lost men of God, Jeffrey and Pete, and left behind families, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort the families and that you would just meet every need in their heart and in their life, Lord. Provide for them and, and how they need the, the Holy Spirit comfort right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray over them. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with Pastor Bill um, as he's in the hospital from a heart condition and couldn't uh, teach tonight at the church. And Lord, we just want to pray for, for him. 
and that it would just be nothing, Lord, that you would just come out strong and that you would just touch and heal his body. We want to pray, Lord, for uh, those who have uh, come down with COVID, Lord, and other related issues. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just pray for all of this, Lord God. We just pray that you'd heal the plague that is <coughs> upon our nation and upon our world, Lord. But we do pray that this would be uh, something that you could use to bring us all back to you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for that. But do protect us, Lord. Protect our families and pr protect those who are weak and vulnerable, especially, Lord God. May your hand be upon us, Lord Jesus. And we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to worship you, Jesus, our Emmanuel, after Christmas. Lord, here we are just coming before you, still continuing in the things of you, Lord. We don't just go to church twice a year in Christmas and Easter. Lord, we are your disciples. This is every day. This is the day which the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I pray you would meet every single need, Lord, of those who are watching the program tonight. I pray your blessing upon them and their families. I pray that they would prosper and be in health, even as their soul prospers, Lord, right now and into that new year. And Father, as we get into your word, we just pray for that anointing upon your word as our theme is fresh anointing for the new year. And we need that, Lord God. And so speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. 1 John 2, 19. Let me read it and we'll come back and talk about it. And make, you know, the application as the Lord leads. But 1 John 2, 19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. All right, so let's just go back and uh, talk about it. Who is this in verse 19? where it says they went out from us. Well, John's been talking about the false teachers, the Gnostics, during John's day. And that false doctrine, they thought they knew everything. That's what Gnostic means, knowledge. Uh, but they didn't know anything, and they didn't recognize Christ as uh, equal to the Father, that he was just a man, you know. And so uh, they were very um, liberal, and what they believe, because they just felt like, you know, the body is um, uh, evil. Uh, all matter is evil. So what you do in the body doesn't really matter. And uh, they were proud because they felt like they had this uh, superior knowledge to other people. Uh, that they were the uh, illumined that no one else was, you know. Unless you came into our fold kind of thing. And that's like religions today, isn't it? You know, they, they think they have a corner on the market, so to speak. But um, they went out from us. In other words, they were in the church for a while, but then they went out. And so, in one way, we can say, thank you, Lord. You know, because that's a blessed subtraction. You know, we as pastors have, you know, talk about that. We kind of kid amongst ourselves, and even with our congregation, you know, that there are blessed additions when people come into the church and the Lord leads them, but some people come in, and Jesus warned us, didn't he, about uh, the wolves in sheep's clothing. And so, you know, once uh, they are exposed, uh, they try to lead the flock, flock astray or whatever. Maybe the pastors challenge them on that. And then after a while, they just, they just leave. Uh, but they're in there for a while. And Peter talked about this. Remember when we studied Second Peter chapter 2? And then Jesus uh, warned us of false teachers and false uh, prophets that would come in the last days. Um, and teaching things to draw people away from the Lord and the truth of the scriptures. So they went out from us. But then it says, but they were not of us. 
Now, maybe you have known some uh, people who have gone uh, outside the church and um, they have um, fallen away from the faith and they've never, you know, come back to the Lord. What do you do with that? Well, the Bible word for that is apostasy. It means a falling away from the faith. And it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come, you know, the rapture and all, unless the falling away comes first, or the apostasia, and the man of sin, or the Antichrist, is revealed, the son of perdition. So, the Bible predicts that in the last days there's going to be a great falling away from the faith. Have you ever known someone who has fallen away from the faith? Oh, how it hurts your heart, right? And uh, sometimes you don't know if it's a temporary backsliding or a long-term rejection of Jesus. You know, um, if they're truly God's own, they're going to come back to the Lord. Amen. Uh, the Lord's going to bring back the prodigal. He's going to search for that lost sheep. But if they never uh, uh, were born again, of course, you know, they're going to be uh, falling away and um, they're not going to be uh, born again because they're not they're not born again if that makes sense so it's called the apostasy and, and the Bible teaches that we'll see this more and more in the church and then it's going to reflect out there in the world uh, where you're going to see more and more uh, the morals and the mores of society uh, being watered down and polluted uh, with the introduction of things that are ungodly and that do not glorify the Lord and we have seen this, haven't we, in our time with things that are just so, so bad in our country, in our nation, and, and so forth. And how things have, have changed from, you know, uh, just not too long ago, how things were different. And uh, things were more like reflecting the things of the Lord and goodness and truth and all. And now we see a great falling away in the world and in our country even. And it's reflected politically, it's reflect, reflected socially, it's reflected through, um, you know, liberal uh, religion, you know, people who are um, compromising uh, the truth and so forth. And we see it on TV and the media, and we're concerned about what our children are watching, but we should be concerned about what, you know, grown-ups are watching too. So there's going to be this falling away, but it says... For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. And that's what Jesus said. He said that he who endures to the end shall be saved. And that's what the reformers uh, talked about so often. You know, John Calvin and, and uh, others, that there's the perseverance of the saints. That how do you prove your authenticity as a Christian? Well, you're just going to persevere until the end. You know, the Holy Spirit's inside of you. And uh, you're going to have some hard times, of course, but, uh, you know, the Lord's going to keep you and I and so forth. Uh, the perseverance of the saints. We continue with the Lord. The Bible says that we're kept by the power of God in 1 Peter uh, 1, 4. And that the Lord is our keeper there. What is that? Psalm uh, uh, 122, I think. Lord, Psalm 121, the Lord is our keeper. So, praise God, we're kept and we continue on in the things of the Lord. We don't draw back, like Hebrews says. We continue on in the things of the Lord. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So eventually there's going to just be that, um, uh, that whole atrophying of their, of their faith and their, their coming to church and their attendance and so forth. And they're going to be made manifest that they really... Uh, didn't know the Lord, you know, because they're out, their heart isn't, hasn't been changed. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian, right? Just like you can sit in your garage all day long, it doesn't make you a car. So uh, we have to keep that in mind. How do you know? Well, we don't know. The Bible says that there's, there's tares in the wheat and that at the end, the Lord's going to sort it all out. And uh, we can't, you know, go around and, and ha be like... Uh, you know, some kind of uh, sin sniffer, and, and we don't have any measuring device or app on our phone to tell who's like an authentic Christian and, and who isn't. 
So the Bible says that um, we just reserve that judgment uh, for the Lord. Amen. Uh, but the Bible does say that you shall know them by their fruits. So at least we can do some fruit inspection there. So verse 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I love that. So now we know with a little bit of the background of these Gnostic teachers that they, had, they thought they had greater knowledge than others. Here the Bible says, you have an anointing from the Lord, from the Holy One, and you know all things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's in your life, and um, you don't need special revelation from other teachers and false doctrine and, and, and books and input from others who um, are way off from the Bible, you know? I just love how Billy Graham always said, the Bible says, you always reference the Bible, the Bible says, and that's what we do. You know, we compare everything to the Bible, and if, if it's not of the Word, then we know it's not of the Lord, and we shouldn't have it in our lives or in our church, and we shouldn't be teaching, you know, that false, that false way of things. And so it says we know all things. Uh, we know we have the discernment. We have the knowledge when something comes our way and it's like you know it's presented to us and if it's not of the lord then we're going to have that discernment we're going to have that check in our spirit you know and we're going to be able to see that counterfeit bill coming through so to speak because we have that um anointing and discernment uh of the the word of god and the spirit of god True Christians have a built-in lie detector and persevere in the truth. Isn't that cool? That's what one commentator said. True Christians have a built-in lie detector. So uh, as we hear things, um, as we talk to people, uh, maybe someone on TV or whatever, uh, something that you you read about online, uh, you know, or whatever, it's like, Wow, it just doesn't sound right. It's like a lie detector. Something just goes off within you, and you know that that's, that's not right. And that's the Holy Spirit, and that's the truth of the Word that's inside of you. Brothers and sisters, because you and I have the truth, then we can detect all lies, and we won't be deceived. That's why I'm glad you're watching the program tonight. And, um, you know, that we go to church, and we read our Bibles, don't we? And we have a, a devotional life. And it's just so cool that we can, we can do that. Take some time this holiday season to get into the Word. Word. You probably have other plans as well, like, you know, get caught up on your laundry and maybe go skiing or, you know, do some visiting. Uh, but uh, enjoy the holidays. But keep in the Word, too. Uh, if we have some extra time especially, let's just get out the Word. I love the... Uh, the phone apps are so cool, aren't they? Because that way you have your Bible with you always. And um, maybe there's just opportunities that we have to where it's like, you know, I've done a lot of social media, always checking my Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but now I'm just going to um, bring up my Bible app and kind of maybe rotate that in with my social media. Uh, maybe memorize some scripture. Um, maybe get into, uh, we'll probably talk next week more. I'll do some posting on my Facebook about um, developing a, a program for the new year for your Bible reading. And I'll be posting through the Bible in a year, which I always do. But you don't have to do that one. Um, I do that. But uh, just read and be consistent in the Word. That way you'll always have your lie detector working. Amen? And you can judge that, that false doctrine when it comes. And so verse 21. I have not written to you because you know you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Those things can't go together. We're people of truth. And if it's not true, then it's just a lie. And, um, you know, we just stay with God's truth. And... Verse 22, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the Messiah, the one who has come from God. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoa. 
And so we've talked before, last time we were together, we talked about uh, the Antichrist, you know, capital A Antichrist. And we also talked about um, how he's coming, but um, there's a spirit of Antichrist in the world today. Things that are against Christ. That's what it means. Things that are against Christ. And it all starts with, uh, you know, what John says here, that the Gnostic teachers of his day uh, didn't think that Jesus was God or the Son of God. So they denied the Son. And so it says he uh, is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. And listen to this, 23, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has a Father also. Jesus and the Father go together. Hello, you've got Father and you've got the Son of God. And they are equal, uh, along with the Holy Spirit that we, we prayed for that anointing, didn't we, during the worship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, three in one, and one God in three persons. This is the Trinity. Uh, we believe in the triune Godhead, you know. And so um, a lot of people uh, downplay Jesus, don't they? they? They diminish him, saying, oh, he's just a good teacher, you know. And they do have a lot of respect for him, but they don't see him as the Son of God. The Bible says, oh, watch out, because if you deny the Son, you're also denying the Father. You look at every major religion, cult, uh, ism, philosophy, uh, mindset, worldview out there that uh, is um, in the world, then what you see is a common denominator that Jesus is just a man. He's just a prophet, you know, and he said some good things. But that's not true. The Bible says he is God. And he died in our place on that cross. Amen. And he rose again. And that is the truth. And so we always uh, emphasize Jesus. Everywhere we go, we say, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. And the Lord's got a great plan for your life. Have you accepted Jesus? Do you want to say the sinner's prayer? You know, we're always lifting up the name of Jesus. He's our focus. He's the head of the church. He's the head of our lives. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's our Lord. Amen. We say Jesus is my Savior. That was yesterday with Christmas, right? But Jesus is my Lord. He owns everything in my heart and life. Everything right here in my heart. Remember how Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If any man opens the door... I will come into him and have fellowship with him and he with me. He wants to come into your heart and life and settle down there. Do you have a place for Jesus in your heart? You know, they didn't 2,000 years ago. There was no room for him in the inn. Jesus was born in the backyard stable somewhere in Bethlehem. But that was the Lord's plan to show the humility of Christ and how we should be humble too, you know. Jesus died for us. He rose again. He's our Savior. He is our Lord. Brothers and sisters. Well, we are going to finish up by talking about the anointing. You hear that a lot in Christian circles. The anointing. Um, what is that? You know, um, Did you receive the anointing? And, and so forth. It's very popular and uh, charismatic circles. Uh, Pentecostal circles, um, but you know what? We just want to look at it uh, to the core of it and ask, what is it? What is the anointing? So first of all, let's go to verse 27 of 1 John 2 here. Now we're going to jump ahead to next week's study, okay? And uh, 1 John 2, 27, look at it. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So it's talking about you don't need these false teachers to teach you. Of course, we need 
uh, pastors and teachers. These are raised up by God and their gifts to the body of Christ. But it says here, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And so there is this anointing. So let's talk about it more specifically now. It all starts in the Old Testament. Let's trace it through the Old Testament and bring it up to the New. In the Old Testament, uh, Moses was told to um, take the olive oil and, and mix it with frankincense. And there's some ingredients there that was very special. And that they would anoint um, Aaron and his son as priests. And then the furnishings of the tabernacle. You know, that's the worship, the traveling worship center that the Israelites had for 40 years there in the wilderness. And so Moses did make this, or he had an apothecary, uh, you know, um, put these ingredients together. Must have smelled so good, you know. And uh, so it says in um, Exodus chapter 30, verse 26, you shall... Uh, with it you shall anoint the tabernacle of meeting and the ark of the testimony. And then later on, Exodus 30, 30, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, that they may minister to me as priests. And we see that in Psalm 133, uh, there is a beautiful description of how uh, the oil was poured on Aaron during his anointing. And it must have been poured so much, not like just a little dabble, do you? Like we do today, like I after church today, I a lady came up and and wanted me to anoint her with oil, um, so I did, and I just put a little dab on her forehead. It, but you know, in the Bible days, it was more like a pour than a dab. And Psalm 133 says that it flowed down Aaron's head onto his beard. You know, and you can just picture it come down on his robes and to the floor of the tabernacle. He and his sons were anointed of the Lord. And what is this? It's a symbol of what? Right, the Holy Spirit. This is a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person's life. And so that oil represented that. And uh, then in Exodus chapter 40, Moses was in detail anointing every uh, piece of furniture. There's seven pieces there of the uh, tabernacle, um, including, you know, like the menorah, altar of incense, and the ark and of the testimony and so forth. Set apart for God, you know. A beautiful thing. Now, let's go over to 1 Samuel 16, 12. The anointing of David. David. Uh, was chosen by God uh, through the prophet Nathan, who came over to Jesse's house. He had all these boys, and David was the youngest. He wasn't even in the house. He was tending the sheep out in the field. And uh, the prophet, uh, it was Samuel, not Nathan. The prophet Samuel said, um, you know, none of these brothers are called by the Lord. Do you have any other sons? Oh, yeah, he's out there pastoring the sheep. Bring them in. David came in, and in 1 Samuel 16, 12, it says, So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes, and good-looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. And Samuel poured the oil upon his head. And uh, this is a beautiful picture of Christ, because Jesus came from the line of David, right? And um, he is going to be the anointed king's. The anointed king, because we call Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And uh, throughout the uh, Old Testament, we have the kings anointed by God for their service and, and so forth. And, and um, then we pick it, this up again, this theme, in Isaiah 61.1. So if you can, turn to Isaiah 61.1. Here's a prophecy about Jesus. Uh, this is after David. And before Christ, 700 years actually before Christ. And it's talking about the anointing of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. In fact, Messiah means the anointed one. Okay, Remember, Holy Spirit came upon the priest, came upon the kings, so that they could serve the Lord. It's a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person's life 
to know the Lord and to serve the Lord and to do all that God has called them to do. So again, Isaiah 61.1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Here's the prophecy about Jesus. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Wow. So, what we see, this prophecy, is the anointing of the Messiah. And he's going to come. And he's going to be Jesus Christ, which means Messiah, or the anointed one. So, now we have... <clears throat> We go to Matthew, and we see in Matthew chapter 3 that when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him as a what? As a dove, and alighted upon him. And the heavens were open, and, and the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I, was well, I am well pleased. And Jesus then, with that anointing, entered his ministry. First, the, the temptation out there in the wilderness and he defeated Satan through the word of God. And he was strong in spirit. And he went forward into his ministry to share the gospel, the good news that he is, is the son of God. And he healed people. And he raised the dead. And he healed the lepers. And he cast out demons. And, and he just gave the, the good news to the poor and everything that we just read about, you know. And um, then... It says, when he went to Nazareth, get this, when he went to his hometown, think about your, where you're from. You go, you go home, and he went to his uh, synagogue. It's like us going to our old church where we grew up or where we first got saved or something like that. So he goes in there. They're having their Jewish church there, the synagogue, and they, uh, they have free open reading time. And so... The people are allowed to get up and to find a scroll, you know, and they have these scrolls like in these little cubby holes, and they're all marked at different sections of the Bible. Jesus goes up there, and guess what scroll he picked up to read? The Isaiah scroll of what is right in front of us here. And he opened it up. It would be like this, wouldn't it? He opened it up, and he read from that section, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he sat down. Remember how he put the scroll back? And it, he sat down and all the eyes of the people were upon him as he sat down. And re remember what he said? This day, this reading is fulfilled in your hearing. He was saying that he was the Messiah, the anointed one. Wow. So what happened? He was rejected by the Jews. He was crucified. But our Lord rose again and he ascended to the father and he's coming again and he will receive uh the kingdom from the father and we're going to rule and reign with him the bible says for a thousand years and he's going to be king of kings and lord of lords and uh you know it's just going to be such a beautiful beautiful thing and after that we have all of eternity it's called the eternal state by theologians you know uh, but the kingdoms of this world will be the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And maybe you heard, uh, you know, Handel's Messiah during the holiday season. You know, this year I didn't hear it, come to think of it. But how he emphasizes that king of kings forever, forever, Lord of lords, forever, forever. And he shall reign forever and ever, forever, forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, that's my version of Handel's Messiah. And so that's the anointing of Jesus. But now what about you and I? Let's bring it back here to 1 John. The Bible says we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So how does that all 
uh, happen in our life? Well, let me give you a few scriptures now from the New Testament. It says in 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22, He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Whoa, there it is. Who has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. And so we have the Holy Spirit in our lives now. And we are the anointed of the Lord because we have the Holy Spirit. Listen, not just upon us, but inside of us. In the Old Testament, that oil you know, was placed upon people and the Spirit of God came upon people that they might do uh, their service for God. But for you and I, it's different because when we're born again, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. Wow. And the Holy Spirit is with us. He's inside of us. And, but we also can have the experience of the Holy Spirit upon us. This is Bible teaching. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the world. And so praise God for that. Jesus predicted that the, the helper would come, the Holy Spirit would come. The, think about it, the night of his betrayal, they're in the upper room. The next day he's going to be crucified. And the, the disciples are feeling sorrowful. Just like, you know, Jesus is going to be leaving them and they, they feel the sorrow. Jesus has been talking about that. I'm going to be leaving. But look at the promise, John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. <laughs> and so Jesus, as he leaves, is going to be beneficial because now the Holy Spirit will come to all and upon all who put their faith and trust in Christ. John 16, 13, he also says in the upper room, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak on his own authority, but what, whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So we have the Holy Spirit now guiding us into all truth, just like we're having this experience right now. Oh, brothers and sisters, isn't that just wonderful? And on the day of Pentecost, when the church was born, they were there in the upper room, about 120 of them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and they prophesied and people came and said, what is going on? They heard him just speaking and, and glorifying God. And Peter preached to the crowd, remember that? And 3,000 people were saved and baptized. And what a glorious outpouring of the Spirit. The church was born at that time, 2,000 years ago. And we have the same Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, today. Uh, there's been a lot of water under the bridge, a lot of church history. Some has been good and some not so good as you read and study church history. But here we are today, followers of Christ and reading God's Word and being truthful to the gospel of Jesus Christ in these last days. And we'll go down swinging, right? Amen? For the truth of Jesus Christ in these last days. <coughs> and we'll become more and more of a minority and a remnant of believers. But we got to keep praying for each other. Amen? Keep walking with the Lord and uh, walking in that anointing to do the work of the Lord. And let's just finish with that. We have the anointing of the Lord to enjoy a beautiful relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, with that power, but also to serve the Lord. And it says in Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Oh, brothers and sisters, now we have that anointing to go out into this world to do what Jesus did. It says, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good, and that's you and I. Jesus is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us, and we go about doing good. Yes, we do. And 
um, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Look at our world today. Look how how um, discouraging it is as we look at people's broken lives and what the devil has done to rip them off and to sell them a, a bunch of uh, uh, a bag of lies, right? And people have taken it. Look where we were before we knew Jesus, B.C., before Christ, before our conversion, you know? So many of us, we were just so lost, and it manifested in so many of these ways. And we look at our, our world today. It's broken. It, it's, it's so hopeless out there. People don't know what to do with this continued, you know, uh, virus and, and so forth. And people are, are dying, and people are, are just hopeless. Uh, people are out on the street. Um, people are, are just, um, you just so, they're so discouraged. Can you imagine living in this current world without Jesus? Oh my goodness. And here you and I come and this is why we have our jobs and we live where we live and our neighbors are, are all around us. And um, our grocery store that we go to and the people that we know and our mail carrier and um, our insurance uh, person and everybody that we know, our cousin and uh, you know the lady down the street you know, that you might wave at, you know, all these people are in our lives so we can point the way to Jesus and share the gospel with them, that they might be saved and that people would be saved from the oppression of the devil. And it says, for God was with him. God was with Jesus with that anointing, brothers and sisters. Oh, to know the Lord, to know his truth and to have the power that we need and brothers and sisters, it's not in us. We are inadequate. And I'm telling you something. You and I feel weak each and every day, don't we? And we sure not, we're sure not getting any younger. But, you know, we just need to lean on the Lord and on his power. Some days are just an uphill battle, aren't they? Don't you just feel it? You feel like you got three back, military backpacks on and you're going on, climbing up the steepest hill that you've ever climbed. And it's like, Lord Jesus, please help me and, and deliver me. Brothers and sisters, you have the strength of the Spirit to match life's demands and whatever comes your way. And even when it gets crazy and hairy and uh, all these trials and tribulations like Job of old, the Lord will give you the strength to endure. And he's going to give you um, strength beyond yourself to do all that you've, you're called to do. Many of us are under pressure. Many of us are under, uh, so we have so many demands placed upon us, you know, just by necessity. And, and it's like, wow, I've got so much to do always. And I'm just filled with, with uh, responsibility. I'm filled with, with this uh, upward climb. Um, and, and, you know, whatever it might be with your family or, or your health, uh, that's always, you know, not good and, and you're struggling with uh, your family and relationship problems and situations and, and things that you, uh, you know, are, are so concerned about. You know, if we didn't have Jesus, we would just be, be crazy, right? You know, you think about it and that the world is so, is so, I guess I could just use the word crazy out, out there and it's so messed up. But yet with Jesus, he makes all things right, doesn't he? Yes, he heals the brokenhearted. We just read that. And he just takes our situation. You know, when we've run out of, of options and uh, ideas, money, <laughs> friends to support us, whatever it might be, Jesus is always there and he's always enough. And he'll give us what we need to uh, have an effective walk with the Lord and to not cave in and, and to uh, become unhealthy in our hearts or in our minds or in our emotions. And it will translate even into our physical bodies, I believe, because a lot of what we have in our bodies is the result of what we have in our hearts. You know, we carry things and they cause problems in our hearts and minds and bodies. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you would take these cares and these concerns 
unto yourself. We cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. And your word says that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And that you, Lord, would lighten our burden. You'll make a way of escape. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. We pray for that rest. We pray for fresh anointing. We pray the prayer of the psalmist who said, Anoint my head with fresh oil. And Lord, I do that right now. We pray for ourselves, Lord. We pray for myself. In the name of Jesus, a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit to empower us to know you, Lord, and to serve you and to be an overcomer and not overcome by life's crushing load. Thank you, Lord, that you are greater and nothing is too hard for you. All things are possible with God. And we thank you and we pray that this would carry us into that new year that's right around the corner, Lord, and all that you have for us. And we're not going to be scared of it because of what's happened the last couple years, but we're going to have confidence and face that future with a new grit in our life and determination to follow Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Wow, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see um, others coming on here. Hi, Rhody. Um, so good to see you. She says, good word. Thank you, Pastor Louie. Well, thank you, Rhody, because you're always, you're a good example to me. You're always in the word on your program. And uh, yes, Elvia, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Um, and Maria's come on. And uh, she's saying, uh, Merry Christmas, um, and that um, she's going to be watching um, the beginning of the program um, once uh, the, the final song is, is done. She's going to go back and watch it. And that's what's cool about this is you can uh, watch it if you've missed it. You know, it's not going anywhere. And also remember that I have a YouTube channel, and I transfer these over to the uh, to YouTube and you can even get old episodes as well uh, just type in Louis Monteith uh, when you get to YouTube and then um, yes uh, Maria's just making some comments and and so forth so praise the Lord for that thank you so much for your comments you guys and uh, all of you who are are watching have watched will watch god bless you and let's pray right now for uh each other let's close with that song again spirit of the living god fall afresh on me spirit of the living god fall afresh on me next week will be a new year I guess huh wow I could always maybe I should say what my dad always said see you next year you know and he would make people laugh um, towards the end of the year because it's true we'll be in a new year brothers and sisters excited to 
uh, close this one out with you and we'll start fresh. We'll just continue on uh, in with this program in uh, First John and, and on throughout the year as God leads. I'm glad that I can have this program. And uh, oh my goodness, it'll be coming up here in May. It'll be three years. So I'm just happy to, to do this and to have you join and be a part of this ministry. Tell your friends um, about it as well and that they can have a Bible study and, and worship and, and just a wonderful, wonderful time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Enjoy the rest of your holiday and I will see you next year. Amen. Next week. In Jesus' name, amen.